to be outside today, and that's how come I was going to play the guitar. We didn't have a, didn't have to worry about a accompanist or anything, so we just moved inside. But it's going to be a good day. It was going to be so so wet outside last night. My goodness. It's so good to see everyone today. Um, I'm going to, when it comes to announcements, direct your attention to all of the good things that are in the bulletin that have been up here on the screens as well. Uh, of course, all the announcements we do also put on Facebook and we put them on the website and things like that. I do have a couple of additional announcements. Phyllis Yeager is in the hospital. She does have COVID. She's got a blood clot and she's 97. So she's, please keep her in the prayers. Bob is, Bob Yeager is still recovering from COVID. Now their daughter has it as well. So, so please keep the Yeager family in your prayers. And then I'm going to get through this. Jill Wolf passed on Thursday. And there will be a service for her. It's going to be a gravesite only service that's going to be on Friday. It's going to be at the old Riverside Cemetery. And uh, at clear in the back. So I talked to Pam last night, her daughter, and she said they would just love if the, her church family could be there for that. Jill went pretty darn quickly. So we were just, she was there till the end. Her spirit was there till the very end. And she went out the way she wanted to. And so we're just glad for that and rejoice for her. For her failing body is now free. So... Anyway, those are the only two announcements that I have. Does anyone else have an announcement? Somebody better bake cookies because the cookie freezer is very low. Of course, fellowship will be after, after the service today. So please, uh, please join for that. Any other announcements? All right. Chuck wagon meals are also getting low. So if you feel the urge to cook this week, cook some extra and bring it in for Chuck wagon meals. I also wanted to say one other announcement that I have is next week. If you are interested in being in the choir, we're going to have a meeting next week after the service. And uh, so just if you or if you know somebody who you know would be great for the choir, please um, please join us after. It's just an informational meeting to see going forward. Um, we, of course, have concerns with the new variant, with the number of people who are getting ill, obviously. And so we, we want to make sure that if we do have choir, that we have it safely. And so those are the sorts of things that we're looking at right now. Any other announcements? All right, well, we are blessed today to have Roy Holm lead the service, so I'm going to let Roy take over from here. Well, good morning. Um, I'm Roy Holm, but our good pastor has taken a few days off, so we wish him well, but I wish you well, too, today. Um, would you uh, pray with me? <clears throat> Thank you, Lord, for this fresh, beautiful Sunday morning, and thank you for this congregation gathered to worship and sing praises to your name. We thank you for your word. Uh, be with us as we worship today, and in Jesus' name we pray. Then would you join me with the responsive call to worship? I'll read the standard print if you would read the bold print. The steadfast love of God surrounds us. Be glad and shout for joy, all you upright in heart. We celebrate the good things that God provides. We give thanks for God's steadfast love. Let all who are faithful offer prayers to God. Come to listen for God's counsel and instruction. We are here to encounter one who made us. We are open. God hears our cries and answers our pleas. Rejoice, O righteous, in God's justice and grace. Surely God is our strength and our hope. We will trust in the one who provides all things. Okay, we have our opening hymn, To God Be the Glory. If you would stand, please.
God does not delight in wickedness, whether it be large offenses or small deceits. Lies and boasting have no place with God. We who have disappointed you, dear Lord, in some way, come now to seek forgiveness. Would you join with me in our unison prayer of confession? O God, there is much for which we need to be forgiven. We have coveted what belongs to others while wasting what we have. We are eager for personal gain, even at another's expense. We seek to justify ourselves through good works rather than serving joyously and gratefully to honor you. We speak when we should keep silent and are silent when we should speak. O oh God, our actions are at war with what we believe. Draw us close to you that we might avoid the disaster we are inviting. Amen. Now please take a moment for silent confession. Happy are those whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sin is covered. God forgives and makes our way straight before us. In awe and reverence, let us accept God's gift of forgiveness and allow our ways to be changed. May we live by grace, recognizing and embracing the peace God offers. And now the Gloria. And our next hymn is Shout to the Lord.
Thanks, Wendy. Um, our possessions are given to us that we might know the joy of sharing. And so we'll have a morning offering. We give thanks, generous God, because we owe you more than we can ever repay. We give because we love you and want to show our devotion. We ask that you bless the offering and the generosity of this congregation. Amen. Thank you. Please be seated. May the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Well, two or three months ago, I was working in my garage, and come time to leave, as is my usual habit, I pushed the garage door closer on the south wall of the garage, then I scamper to the north wall of the garage where the big door's coming down, so half the ducks, I don't hit my head on the door, and do a high step to miss the little warning thing, the light, that tells when something's in the way of the door. So I did all that. And I scampered out in the alley and turned, and I felt something and heard something unusual in my knee. That was a foolish move on my part. And so on July 12th, I had a partial knee replacement. Now, a partial knee means that they worked on the kneecap. They cut it all open, Then they slice around the edge of the kneecap and roll it over and they grind off all the arthritis and they glue a plastic disc on there. Then back on the bone that it rides on, they grind off all the arthritis there and they glue on a titanium plate. And so when they roll the kneecap back over, the, the plastic disc and the steel surface makes a nice, smooth joint. They sew it all up and send you home. Well, um, I missed a couple weeks of church because of that surgery, but when I got back, several of us old guys were gathered in the fellowship hall talking about our many surgeries we've had. And it's amazing the number of people who have had surgery, there's knees and hips, shoulders, backs, ankles, both men and women. Well, as we discussed among the old guys, the winter, I'm not sure that's the right word, but the winter was two shoulders and two and a half knees. <laughs> now, I was far behind with just two shoulders, a partial knee, and a carpal tunnel. That's as good as I could do. But, uh, referring again to the surgery, I spent two miserable miserable days in the hospital, then home to be miserable. Probably most people here understand what I'm talking about. You've had surgeries. I was sent home with the usual overload of pain pills. I wasn't getting much sleep, didn't have any happy thoughts, really. Just remained there with a foggy brain and an uncomfortable leg. Quite remarkably, a scripture came to my mind. Be thankful in all circumstances. I'm sure the Holy Spirit brought this scripture to my consciousness. This particular scripture comes from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and is contained in verses 16 through 18. Paul established a church in Thessalonica on his second missionary journey. And this first letter to the church, 
First uh, Thessalonians was a follow-up two or three years after he had established the church as a way to encourage this young church. This particular part of the scripture is contained in Paul's final instructions to the Thessalonians. And chapter 5, verse 16 through 18 reads, Be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Now this is a tall order. I flunked miserably on all three items. Does this mean that we're to give thanks for everything that happens to us? Or do we be thankful God is there in every circumstance? God is with us no matter what happens, and then for that we are thankful. Paul's encouragement for the Thessalonians is an encouragement for us as well. Well, as I went through 1 Thessalonians, I found some other scriptures that fit in well. I think these are all in the bulletin. Uh, 1 Chronicles 16.34 Give thanks to the Lord, for He is good. His love endures forever. Psalm 138, verses 1, 2, and 3. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. Before the gods I will sing your praise. I will bow down before your holy temple and will praise your name for your love and your faithfulness. For you have exalted above all things your name and your word. When I called, you answered me. You made me bold and stout-hearted. That is answered prayer. Ephesians 2, 8 through 10, For it is by grace that you have been saved, through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God's work. It is the gift of God. Not by works, so that no one can boast, for we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. And here we're thankful for this gift from God. Galatians 5, 22 and 23. You're all familiar with this. The, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And we're thankful for all these that give us a, a pleasant demeanor and keeps us on, under control. I had not been thinking faithful, but as I would dwell on my circumstance, the surgery and beyond, there is simply no limit to the items we can be thankful for. I'm thankful for God's Word, for the Bible, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, prayer, prayer partners, and salvation. I'm thankful that there was a surgery that can correct my knee problem. Thankful for the surgical team, the doctors, nurses, the hospital facility, and their compassionate staff. Close family willing to put up with me. My church family and friends, the physical therapy, just, just to name a few. Looking beyond the surgery, I'm basically thankful for all we have. Thankful for prayer, God's creation, the seasons we enjoy so much, the mountains, the valleys, the wildlife, the trees, the rocks, the badlands, just to name a few. And I'm thankful for technology. Thankful for the many gifts and talents God has given to many people. Carpenters and plumbers, electricians, craftsmen, mechanics, teachers, farmers, ranchers, businessmen, artists, musicians, singers, the vast talent in this congregation, thankful for our pastor and our Sunday school teachers, for the elders and deacons, again, to name just a few. And I'm thankful for food, all kinds of food and the ability to work and think. And this list can just go on and on. When we see and appreciate all we're thankful for, it creates an attitude, a good, healthy attitude. 
An attitude is a reflection of how we view things, how we view circumstances, how we view people, how we view events, everything in our lives. A bitter, angry, vengeful, suspicious attitude can rob joy from our lives. Attitude is so very important. A thankful, thoughtful, happy attitude can extend to forgiveness, purging old grievances, and allowing peace of mind. I certainly did not have an attitude of thankfulness after surgery until the Holy Spirit brought Scripture to my mind. We have the very best example of attitude in the Old Testament, an attitude of thankfulness, making the best of a bad situation, and honoring God. I'm speaking of Daniel. <clears throat> the following few paragraphs I'll be reading are from the book The Daniel Key by Anne Graham Watts. She does a wonderful job of explaining the Babylonian defeat of Jerusalem and the young men who were taken. I'll begin the book quote. When Daniel was approximately 15 years old, a history-changing event radically altered his life in ways he would never have imagined. Babylonian troops had surrounded Jerusalem and conquered it. They then gathered the city's most intelligent, gifted, personable, handsome, capable young men and transported them back to Babylon to serve in King Nebuchadnezzar's court. Daniel and his friends were caught up in what is known as the first deportation when the enemy soldiers led approximately 200 young Jewish men from Jerusalem to Babylon where they were enslaved. When Daniel arrived in the capital city of his nation's enemy, he immediately was plunged into an intense three-year brainwashing program. In an effort to cut him off from his past and assimilate him into the Babylonian culture, Daniel was stripped of his Hebrew name, which meant, God is my judge, and renamed Belteshazzar, which is a cry to the wife of the Babylonian god Bel. It was an unveiled effort to weaken, if not destroy, Daniel's faith in his God. At the same time, Daniel was probably stripped of his masculinity. The fact that his immediate supervisor was the master of the eunuchs implies that Daniel himself was one. This heartless act was surely intended to humiliate Daniel and force him into a subservient position that communicated clearly that his only purpose in life was to serve Nebuchadnezzar. Daniel would not be distracted by a wife or children. And that ends our book quote. Daniel likely saw Many adults he knew butchered by the Babylonians when they took Jerusalem. After marching 800 miles to Babylon, and the life started there we just read about, Daniel knew that none of his dreams or aspirations or future plans as a young man would ever come true. Daniel was conscripted to be a slave to a ruthless king. He would never see Jerusalem again. How could anyone have a positive, thankful attitude under those circumstances? Remarkably, Daniel did. He made a habit of giving thanks to God three times every day. How could that be? Now again, referring to the book, The Daniel Key, I have another paragraph to read. The key to thankfulness is not to view God through the lens of our circumstances, but to view our circumstances through the lens of God's love and sovereign purpose. Now that takes a little thought. Let me read that one again. The key to thankfulness is not to view God through the lens of our circumstances, 
but to view our circumstances through the lens of God's love and sovereign purpose. God had called Daniel not to a life of comfort and ease, but to a life of greatness. And so Daniel could thank God for everything in his life. He knew as he entered his winter years that all things had worked together for his good in order to enable him to fulfill God's purpose. As a result, Daniel did indeed live a life of greatness. And that ends our book quote. If Daniel had any other attitude, we would not have ever heard of Daniel or learned from his faithfulness and thankfulness. Through the surgery and the nudging of the Holy Spirit and preparing for today, I've had an attitude adjustment. We all have much to be thankful for. Amen. Would you pray with me? Once again, we thank you for all we have for our lives and our many blessings we enjoy. This morning, we ask that you would comfort those who have suffered a loss in the family, that you would be with those who need healing and relief from sickness or injuries. We pray for those in Afghanistan who are trying to leave the country and for those in Haiti who have suffered an awful earthquake and, and, and worse. We pray for our own country, the USA, and the political leadership. We pray that these politicians would seek your counsel, dear Lord, and that you would protect our military folks around the globe. We ask that you would be with our Pastor Pat as he has time off, help him to relax, to recharge, and for encouragement for him. Now, would you join me in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And if you would stand for our closing hymn, give thanks. Sponsor benediction, but Wendy, do I have time for a little story? We have time. Well, I want to tell you about Morris and Frida. They were farmers, and they loved going to the county fair. And every year they'd get there, and Morris would say to Frida, 
I sure would like to ride that helicopter. And Frida would say, Morse, that costs $50. You know, $50 is $50. So they went to the fair every year, and it was the same story. Finally, they went to the fair, and Morse said to Frida, I'm 85 years old. I may never have a chance to fly in a helicopter. Can I go fly in a helicopter? Frida says, you know, that costs $50, and $50 is $50. Well, the pilot of the helicopter overheard their conversation and said, I'll make you a deal. I'll take you both up in the helicopter, and it'll be free if you don't make a sound. No words, not a peep. Your ride will be free. Well, they thought that was okay, so they loaded up in the helicopter, and the pilot took him up and did his acrobatics, right side up, upside down, straight up and straight down, roll one way and roll the other, and all in silence. And they landed, and the pilot said, Morris, I didn't think you could do it, but you got a free ride. And Morris says, that was quite a ride. And I almost said something, when Frida fell out, but $50 is $50. <laughs> okay. We better move on to our benediction. But first, I want to thank the ushers, Jan Lynn and Vune, for ushering, and um, thank you, Wendy, for providing all the music today. And uh, thank you for the folks that prepare refreshments afterwards. So I'll read the standard type if you'll read the bold type. How good it is that we have been together in worship. Go now in peace. Your faith is saving you. We will continue to pray this week. Surely God will be with us, saving and healing. The steadfast love of God surrounds you always. Be glad, rejoice, and trust in God's mercy. Let our shouts of joy be heard among all people. We have good news to share about God's realm. By the grace of God, Christ lives in you. Deliver the gospel in joyous acts of caring. We have received forgiveness, assurance, and peace. Now we seek to live out the message and pass on the gift. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you all for coming and have a good day.